how quickly can we heal something that's been inside of our body, inside of our mindset for <clears throat> decades that we've never let go of? Yeah. And it's, and it's a part of us. How quick are we able to do that uh, from past trauma? Yeah. Well, here's the deal with trauma. And it's kind of an interesting thing because when you're traumatized, some threat or some danger or some condition in your outer world through your senses is changing how you feel in your inner world. And the quotient of change between the way you normally feel and some alarm state, when you change your internal state and move into that emergency mode, you narrow your focus on the cause and the brain freezes an image and takes a snapshot and that's called a long-term memory and now that image is branded holographically into the brain so then they remember we remember experiences better because we can remember how they feel and and that memory then changes the person's biology so they think neurologically within the circuits of that experience and they feel chemically within the boundaries of those emotions and how we think and feel becomes our state of being mm -hmm. so so now the person biologically has changed and many times it's the strong emotion that begins to select and instruct the gene that creates disease. Why? Yeah. Because if the environment signals the gene and that's the truth, that's epigenetics and the end product of an experience in the environment is an emotion. <laughs> the emotion that you feel from that event is literally selecting the gene Gosh, it's crazy. for you to begin to change and the genes make proteins. And so the, the person, if it's, if it's strong enough, begins to wear their trauma, not just in their brain. Now it's in their body because every time they think about that trauma, every time they review it, every time they keep creating the imagery, they keep firing and wiring the circuits in their brain and they keep feeling the feeling emotionally in their body. And their body is so objective that it's believing it's living in the same past experience 50 to 100 times a day. And all mm. you need is a stimulus and response, an image and if an emotion, a thought and a feeling, and you're conditioning the body into the past. Well, you're conditioning the brain and body into the past. And it doesn't matter if the actual event happened to you or not, because if you have the image, what I'm hearing you say, it's still gonna connect to the body. So like what's happening right now is people are consuming probably more than 50, 100 pieces of media talking about trauma in the world right now. Right. Is that, is that causing more physical damage on our bodies without actually having it physically hurt us well let me finish that thought and yes, then we can answer this that question mind-blowing so then you asked if is it possible then can that people can heal that quickly in one week yeah because what if they create an inner event that carries an amplitude of gratitude or joy or freedom breakthrough from the chains of the past and when the body is liberated and you feel that elevated emotion the stronger the emotion you feel from that breakthrough, the more you're going to pay attention to the image in your mind. And now you're now beginning to brand new circuitry in the brain and your body's being conditioned into a new future. And the stronger the emotion you feel, and the more you pay attention to the picture, the more you're conditioning the body over time to the future instead of the past. So now you keep knocking on that genetic door emotionally, then that emotion ultimately signals a new gene that upregulates up that gene to produce better proteins. And the person then all of a sudden starts healing. And we have research to show that people can do that in four days, signal genes to reduce cancer cells. And wow. to, to signal stem cells to, to suppress, um, uh, to go to active tissues and repair them and regenerate them and suppress uh, inflammation. The, we have research to show that you could change the number of brain cells you have just by, by doing this properly. And so now all of a sudden, the so person four, starts in four, day, in, in four days, days yeah. you can start to reverse some of the damage you've done in your body, uh, depending on the degree of damage, it sounds like, but in four days by, by simply replacing the imagery, the visualization, the acknowledgement to a different emotion, an emotion of joy, gratitude, peace, perspective, acceptance, I'm assuming these things. A vision of your future. A, a vision, vision of what of you want that's positive future. as opposed right. to a vision that is tied to a negative event of the past over and over right. every single right. moment of the day. Your body will start to heal. Your immune system will start to heal. And you'll start to get, you'll start to shift your genes. Gene expression. Absolutely. 
Gene, what's the difference between gene expression and just genes? Well, you know, you come with a lot of genes and they're just a library of potentials. They're just a storehouse of information of possibilities. So then you got to get the right <clears throat> signal, the right lock into the key that begins to select and instruct genes that cause genes to make different proteins. And you can regulate so many different genes, the same genes, you can regulate them differently. So when they upregulate, they start producing really healthy and robust proteins. And that's, that's enzymes, that's tissue, that's structure, that's function, that's hormones, uh, it's immune, immunoglobulins. When they downregulate because of some alarm when there's not a lot of energy for long-term building projects, well, then you keep doing that then the body starts producing cheaper proteins. It's a different signal. It's not a time for growth. And so, mm. and so now to answer your other question, yes. then, then it makes sense then that if you have been an experienced, uh, if you had experience of trauma, say for example, and it's created the feeling of fear and your fear is that it could happen again. And you're, you don't know this, but every time you think about that future, that possible worst case scenario, scenario and you feel the emotion, you're conditioning your body to become the mind subconsciously of anxiety. So now all, all you need now is some cue in your outer environment that says it's unsafe, that it's, there's damage there, that you're, you're a victim, something's bigger than you that could have an effect on you. Well, now that feeling of fear is going to cause you to think thoughts equal to it. So the person then no longer needs the environment to feel that fear. They just to have to have the thought about that condition now. And now they're literally knocking their brain and body out of balance by thought alone. And the body's constantly living in emergency mode. And it takes a lot of energy, a lot of resources to live in emergency mode all the time. And guess what system becomes compromised by it? Immune system. Your immune system. Why? Because you have two protection <clears throat> systems. You got a yeah. you got a system that protects you from dangers in your outer world. That's that's the gas pedal. That's the sympathetic nervous system. That's the fight or flight nervous system. Danger, threat out there. Use all the energy because you got to you got to survive. And when you survive, you got to take care of your body. So right. so so now that system can work really well short term. It doesn't work really well if you keep it on all the time. Because if you're mobilizing all that energy for some threat in your outer world, there's no energy in your inner world for growth and repair. There's no energy for long-term building projects. And energy leaves the brain and it leaves the heart and it moves into these lower centers because now you're tapping the body's resources because there is an emergency. But whether the emergency is real or imagined, whether your anger is valid or justified or not, that the, you're tapping the body's very energy to heal by doing this. And the immune system says, well, we're part of really the other nervous system. We're the brake. We're the clutch. We need to, we need to get into relaxation. We need to get back into balance again. And, and when we do, then we'll metabolize. Then we'll, we'll assimilate. We'll reproduce. We'll, we'll excrete properly. Mm -hmm. so, so now you got a, this kind of battle between the gas pedal and the brake. And the immune system says, hey, listen, if there's foreign agents, if there's viruses, bacteria, molds, funguses, listen, we don't have a whole lot of energy here to deal with them because we're fighting this war out there. There's no homeland security. So they shut down certain receptors in the immune system. They shut down function of those lymphocytes, those white blood cells that are your inner army of protection. And it takes a lot of energy to fight a virus and a bacteria. But if there's right. no energy, hey, listen, it takes energy to raise the body's temperature. Where do you think that comes from? That's part of that branch called the autonomic nervous system. And the sympathetic, the gas pedal is part of it. And the parasympathetic is the clutch is part of that autonomic nervous system. And it's a check and balance. But so you stay in emergency for an extended period of time. And now you're exposed to some antigen or some mm -hmm. uh, external substance, some foreign agent, and there's no, there's no energy uh, to deal with it, then you are victim yes. to your environment because every time you react to your environment and you say that person, that circumstance is controlling the way I feel and the way I think, if something mm. outside of you is controlling your feelings and thoughts, then it makes you a victim to your environment. Your so then, yes. so you will be more victimized or more, you could be more of a victim to other things in your environment. People don't understand this consciously because it's a program subconsciously. So, so now 
if you begin to strengthen your inner environment now, this is where our work comes in because we have research to show that when you place your attention right here in your heart, this center right here, this is, mm -hmm. this is the beginning of our divinity. This is our center of oneness, our wholeness. This is where we begin to feel love, gratitude, compassion, kindness, care, freedom, joy. Um, it's all these elevated emotions that are heartfelt emotions that our research shows that when you begin to teach people how to open this center and you teach them a formula on how to practice it, mm -hmm. that if they did that for four days, that they would begin to strengthen their immune system by 50%. And now wow. let me tell you why, because in the center is your heart, but what most people don't know, there's another gland in there called the thymus gland, thyme leaf. It's named after the, the, th the thyme leaf. And the thymus gland has two functions. It has an endocrinological function. It makes growth hormone. That's our youth center. Mm -hmm. And it makes uh, strong immune chemicals and it has an immunological function. So when you're living by stress and your heart is racing and you're stepping on the gas and the brake at the same time because you can't run, you can't fight, you can't hide, and you got the gas and the clutch going, energy is going to leave the heart and it's going to the adrenal center mm. and you're going to cause contraction in the arteries in your heart and this center will shut down from blood flow. And so there's no energy in the heart. So you teach a person then how to begin to open the center and to start feeling elevated emotions through their heart. And you teach them how to switch or convert from the sympathetic nervous system to the parasympathetic nervous system. Well, all of a sudden now, this thymus gland, which normally shrinks with age, starting at puberty, the fountain of youth now, all of a sudden begins to get new blood flow. Mm. And there's new hormones that are signaled, like oxytocin mm. and vasopressin and all these different chemicals called... Um, nitric oxide and endothelial derived relaxing factor and the arteries in the heart begin to swell with energy and blood flow and this center switches on and now it says man this feels good and this is a time for us to really get back into balance and really let's strengthen our inner world mm -hmm. now and now all of a sudden this thymus gland begins to make thymusin which is an important agent that begins to make t-cells and T cells have little receptors on them called T cell receptors. And when those T cell receptors are robust and strong, those cells make proteins and they make what's called antibodies or immune, immunoglobulins. And these little Y shaped proteins block the receptors coming from the virus that are trying to attack the white blood cells. They have a shield and now they're, they're immune to the to the virus and its attack with its receptor wow. and it can literally begin to inject it with these immunoglobulins primary immunoglobulin a and that begins to cause the virus to not survive wow. and then that white blood cell will uh, uh, pass another white blood cell and pass on the memory to it so it already knows what's coming so now all of a sudden you're making these immunoglobulins and now your inner world now can combat anything that's, that's a foreign agent. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you wanna learn how to unlock the power of your mind even more, then click the link right here to download our free PDF with Dr. Joe Dispenza for more wisdom. Make sure to subscribe to this video as well for more greatness in your life.